This is a homework study area that gets pretty hot in the Texas sun with all these windows. It would be nice if this area had a ceiling fan, but it doesn't. So the project is to run new wiring from the ceiling through the attic down the wall to new switches that will control the fan. Here's the basic wiring scheme. We have a metal junction box that's going to be installed in the attic. And that is where I'm going to tap into existing power and then run a three conductor line down the wall to the wall switch. And then we need to run wire from that switch up the wall over the ceiling to a new fan receptacle. And that is going to be a four conductor wire because I want separate switches to control the fan light and the fan motor. For the fan receptacle, I'm using a straddle box, which is meant to mount directly onto a ceiling joist. First, I'm finding the joist with a stud finder. Then I'm marking center using a laser range finder. And I'm cutting out just enough of the drywall to uh, expose both sides of the joist. That lets me see where I need to position the receptacle to center it over the joist, and then I can trace out the circle and cut it out. Wire's pretty expensive right now, but I did find a website with pretty good prices, and it lets you select just the length that you need. Shipping was free and pretty fast. I will link to their website in the description. In terms of wire nomenclature, it starts with the gauge of the wire, so I'm using 12 gauge wire via 12 slash and then the number of conductors excluding the ground wire. So this wire I'm fishing here has four conductors, a black, red, white, and ground, but it's designated as a three. This will be a 12 slash three wire. So that's one wire fished, and now we need to open up the wall where the switch box is gonna go and feed wire from uh, the attic down to it. Back up in the attic, we need to drill a hole in the top of the wall that's going to let us feed our two wires down. The wire that we just fed through the fan box and then the wire that's going to connect to power in the attic. And that second wire is designated as a 12 slash 2. It has three conductors, a black, a white, and a ground, but you don't count the ground. The wall I'm feeding through is insulated and I just, I didn't have any luck pushing these wires the eight feet or so they needed to go to get all the way down to the switch box. So it's a little bit of a drag, but I had to open up a hole a little further up the wall. Then fish a guide wire, basically two coat hangers taped together from that hole down to the switch. Feed the wire down to the hanger, tape those two together, and then pull them through the rest of the way. So then we pull those wires through the electrical box. This box is mounted just by pushing it into the wall and then turning screws which engage tabs on the back of the box and pull it snug with the drywall.
All right, so we've got our two wires. The one on the left is a 12-2 wire that's going to carry power from the attic once I get that connected. The one on the right is a 12-3 wire that runs from the switch box to the fan box. And next step is to wire these to two switches. The first switch we're wiring up is the one that's going to control the light on the fan. So we have power coming from the attic. That's three conductors. The black or hot wire is being wired to the bottom screw terminal of the switch. And the top screw terminal is being wired to the black wire that leads to the fan. The incoming white neutral wire is being tied directly to the neutral wire that goes out to the fan. The incoming ground is being tied to the ground screw on the switch and also to the ground that goes out to the fan. This red wire will be used with the second switch that I'm going to wire. So when this switch is operated, all it's doing is taking power from this incoming line and making it available on this outgoing line. The second switch we're wiring is this Lutron switch. Again, we have power coming from the attic. We're wiring the black or hot line to the black line on the back of the Lutron switch. The ground wire is being wired to the ground wire of the switch and again, passed through to the fan. We already talked about the neutral being tied and passed through to the fan. The red wire, which was unused for the other switch is used here and that's tied to the red wire on the switch. And this red and white striped wire is unused and will be capped. So what's happening here is when this switch is activated, incoming power from this black line is being made available out onto this red line. The switch has an added feature of a speed control slider. In its bottom most position, it's supplying the least amount of current to the fan, and then you can slide it all the way up to make the fan spin at top speed. It's a convenient feature to have mounted on the wall in case your fan is mounted so high you can't reach the pull chains. Now moving back up into the attic, I'm going to connect that 12-2 wire to the house power. I am not an electrician, so everything I say about electrical is from a DIYer's perspective. It's my understanding that all electrical connections need to be made within a box. That box needs to be secured, uh, in this case, to the framing. And the wires entering and exiting the box also need to be secured here with clamps. I found this yellow wire in the attic that has power in it. So I cut the breaker, I tested it to make sure it's dead, and now I'm going to cut it. And here's how this box is going to be wired. That wire I just cut is going into the box from the top of the screen. The other part is going into the box from the bottom of the screen. 
and also going in from the bottom is the wire that leads to the switch. The wire that I picked to get power from isn't ideal because it's not on the same breaker as the rest of the lights and outlets in that same room. But I needed a wire with enough slack so that after I cut it I could pull it together inside the junction box and make all the connections and this was the best fit for that. So once I have all those wires inserted and clamped, it's just a matter of tying together the three whites, the three blacks, the three grounds, and then you also need to run a ground to the electrical box. Every fan will have its own wiring instructions, but here I'm just wiring all the grounds together, uh, white to white, black to the wire that controls the fan light, and red to the wire that controls the fan motor. I'm embarrassed to say how long it took me to fit these wires back in the electrical box. This video would be twice as long if I showed you the amount of effort it took. To repair that hole in the wall, I'm screwing a scrap board behind the drywall and that's giving me a flat surface that I can put the cutout piece back on. And here we are, patched wall, new wall switches, and new fan.